So I thought that today I would make a short care guide about Venus flytraps because a lot of people have difficulty growing these plants, but they're actually pretty easy once you know what the proper conditions are. So before we get started, I figured I would show some of the cultivars there are of fly traps now. This one's called a dente, and it's got short triangular teeth. There's also red cultivars now, where the plant will be pretty much completely red and uh, full sun. There's some ones with fused traps, so they're sort of like a bowl or a cup. There's ones that have lots of scaling on their petioles. And there's even ones with fused teeth like this, so there's ones you can get at Home Depot or a grocery store, but if you look online, there's actually much more interesting types of fly traps you can buy now. So the first thing we should probably mention is the soil. Uh, they are carnivorous plants, of course, Venus flytrap. They've adapted to catching insects for their source of nutrients, so they don't get any nutrients from the soil. If I were to pull this out of the soil right now, you would just see kind of a rhizome with just tap roots going straight down. And pretty much those roots just anchor the plant in the soil. They don't really absorb any nutrients. And if you were to add fertilizer to it, it would die completely because the roots of these plants aren't adapted to absorbing nutrients. So we're going to have to get a soil that does not have any added fertilizers. Usually something like miracle Grow won't work because they add fertilizers and other enrichment items into the soil. We're going to have to find some kind of pea moss, perlite, or long fibered sphagnum moss to plant them in that is free of nutrients, just pure pea moss or pure sphagnum moss. So I have all mine growing in this long fibered sphagnum moss mixed with perlite and that's my favorite mix because I found that they grow really well in it. Uh, one thing that the long fibered sphagnum moss does that the pea moss doesn't is it's very airy so it prevents rotting because these plants actually like it pretty dry. That's one misconception that people have, that these are growing in swamps, they're gonna be right by the edge of the water, submerged in water, but they actually will rot. So you can just keep them like a regular house plant sitting in a normal pot. And this long fibered sphagnum moss and perlite mix is very loose and airy, so it's gonna be good for the roots to grow in and it will prevent it from getting too compacted and just rotting the rhizome. Another important aspect of these plants is that they need a lot of sunlight, so just sticking them indoors on your windowsill may be nice, and I know a lot of people like their plants and they want to keep them in their bedroom or something, but these plants are native to South Carolina, so they like a lot of sunlight. And you can buy special grow lights for them, but the best option is to just stick them outside. You can put them outside in full sun. You have to acclimate them, of course, if they've been sitting in a store somewhere and you put them out in full sun, they might burn. So just slowly introducing them for a couple hours a day will build up the resistance. And then in the summertime, you can just leave them outdoors in full sun. They'll develop nice red coloration. And another thing about these is that they are not tropical plants. Since they're native to the U.S., they need dormancy. So basically, they don't like to get really, really extremely cold, but they want to have a colder period, maybe around 45 degrees in the winter time. And for most of the United States, even Europe, you can just leave them outside until November because it won't be cold enough to freeze the pot into a solid brick of ice, which would kill them, but it's going to be cold enough where they can go dormant. And then what I do for December through early March is I bring them indoors under a grow light, and what I do is I run them over a short photo period. So 
it's not changing the strength of the light. All it is is just instead of running the light from 8 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night, I have it on a timer where it goes from maybe 9 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock, and that short photo period is going to make it go dormant. Not completely where it just dies back to the roots, but all these tall leaves will fall off, will basically turn black and die, and you'll get a short, compact, ground-hugging rosette that's lying really flat, and that'll tell you that the plant is going dormant, it's not an active growing, and that's going to be enough for it to get dormancy. And the reason you want to give these guys dormancy and not grow them like a tropical plant is because that will exhaust them. They are meant to go dormant in their natural habitat, and that builds the rhizome, it gives them a little break from growing all the time, because if you just leave a grow light on them all year round, they're going to get exhausted and eventually your plants are just going to burn out, for lack of a better term. Alright, so how about the water? How do you water these? Well, a lot of instructions for some reason will tell you, okay, stick the pot halfway in a bowl of water and it's just going to absorb all the water it needs. That's going to be pretty bad because that's going to rot your roots and most people do that inside their house. Even outdoors in full sun, that's too much water. So basically you want to water this so that the soil stays moist but it's never standing in water. And again we talked about we need soil that's free of nutrients. You should never fertilize these plants because they catch insects for their nutrients and they can't absorb it through the roots. Also, a lot of water from the sink or even bottled water will have added minerals to it which will kill these plants. Basically, we can only water these with water that is free of nutrients and you can, you can get a TDS meter to test the dissolved solids in the water and you want something that's under 50 parts per million. So you can collect rainwater, that'll work, uh, reverse osmosis water, if you happen to have a reverse osmosis unit you can use that. Or you can also just go to the store and get a jug of distilled water. They sell pretty much at every grocery store, so just watering them with distilled water will be enough to not burn the roots. And again, you want to water it so that the soil stays moist, but you don't want it soggy. So just kind of water it until the soil is moist and then you can just leave them for a couple days. And once the soil on top starts to dry a little bit, then you can water them again. So another thing people might do is put their fly trap in a terrarium and really you should just stick with a standard plastic pot because a terrarium isn't good in the long run. What it'll actually do is it's going to not have any drainage holes on the bottom so accidental minerals that are introduced by some kind of bad watering or something they can build up. Um, also the soil will just get really stagnant because it's just going to be sitting in water and bacteria are going to develop and it's not going to be able to dry out really good and that's just not going to be good in the long run. Also, since these plants do like to grow outdoors, if you stick a terrarium outside every time it rains, it's going to flood, and that's not going to be ideal either. Another thing is feeding. You don't really need to feed your plant if you just stick them outside in full sun like they should be growing. They'll catch their own insects. Of course, in the fall and winter time when they're going dormant, they don't need to eat at all, so there's really no need to actually feed them. And if you feed them something like beef or chicken, that's going to kill the trap because they're not meant to digest that kind of protein. They really only can digest insect proteins. So if you want to, you can throw a bug in there once a month or something, but there's really no need to. And especially if people are just feeding every time the trap opens up, that's going to just feed it way too much and it's going to kill off the traps. It's pretty simple to keep these alive. All you really need is bright light, so either outside in full sun or a grow light indoors and water them with water that's distilled or rainwater that's free of any dissolved solids or added minerals. Keep them in a nutrient-free, long-fibered sphagnum moss with perlite or pea moss. Make sure there's no added nutrients or fertilizers to that. You don't really ever have to feed them, so just make sure that they're not overwatered. Just water it every time it's uh, sort of getting dry on the top. And that's pretty much it. They're pretty easy to take care of. You just give them a lot of sunlight and keep the water 
uh, regulated so that it's moist but never soaking wet.